<laughs> Let's go to the town. Oh, are you shit? A mysterious enemy emerges. This is new. I could feel the air quiver with ominous malice as a dark and terrible presence drew slowly closer with firm resolve. I ready myself to fend off the fearsome foe. Oh, okay. Oh, shit. Um, I should totally use something for these. I'll try to do a lot of reversal edge, so I can try to get more, uh, damage. Because this guy is level 90. What the shit? I'm only level 89, save. I mean, granted, he is fighting with a somewhat weaker weapon, but he's a level 90 character. He's not going to be easy to take down. If you have to use the bathroom, do it, save. Don't just stand around. Shit, I should have stuck with X. Ah, fuck you. Please give me a good fucking weapon for doing that. Octagonal Rod level 56 is not a good weapon. But I think I earned him as a mercenary. It's been a while since I last been to the village of the wind deity. Hmm. <sighs> I'd last been to the village of Oh, yeah, that's right. It seems I have been busy in my ax absence as festival preparations were in full swing. When I met Plato, she had brought with her a petite young girl named Talon. The stage is slippery, making it very tricky to move around, and your opponent's hits knock you back further. That sucks. The next time I visited the village, its people were busy preparing for another ritual. I guess I had a habit of for showing up at a festive times. Ethan, you came! Plato had spotted me before I could find her, and I turned to see her running over, accompanied by a rather petite young girl. Talm, this is the person I was telling you about. Talm, who had been hiding behind Plato, stepped out from her shadow and bowed nervously. Hi, I mean, greetings. I'm Talm. Talm here has all the makings of an incredible priestess of the winds. With her power, the elders say she's the reincarnation of the ancient priestess. I don't know about that. Don't be so modest, Talm. She's still not very confident about her sword dance, even though the big day's tomorrow. Oh, I know, Ethan. It would be the winds that sent you here. You helped me before with my sword dance. Would you mind helping my cousin? How's that sound, Talm? That'd be wonderful. I'd really appreciate it. Ha <laughs> ha. I wonder if she's still voiced by the same person who voiced her in Soul Calvary 4 and maybe the other two Soul Calvers that she was in. I forget. Battle 1. Fight! Why is the stage slippery, though? Whoa! 
Oh, there she went. <laughs> Awesome. I seriously hate the slippery maps, though, especially when it's the In Search of Strength quest, quest, because it just gets annoying. Thank you for all of your help. So, do you see how strong she is? As Plato passed me some water, I told her that Talon did indeed have exceptional power. Talon really is special. Do you remember our first meeting when I told you about the last Priestess of the Winds? Well, it's Talon. Tomorrow will be her first sword dance. Please do her the honor of being here to watch, okay, Ethan? Plato's smile was warm, but I sensed a hint of sadness in it. When I arrived at the ritual grounds, the preparations were already complete. Among the crowd of people I saw Talon, looking nervous. Plato, however, was nowhere to be seen. I'm gonna watch it, because, come on. Why would you not? Talon began. Her movements were light and grace to play as confident, powerful strikes. Yet the wind Talon created roared and raged, bending the nearby trees almost to breaking. So this was the power of the last priestess of the winds. As the dance neared its finale, Talon turned to me as played ahead before, and a fierce gust roared in my direction. Additional breeze, this wind hit me with such incredible force it knocked me unconscious. Wow, uh... I opened my eyes to see a youthful face peering down at me in worry. You're awake! Oh, thank the winds! To be honest with you, I'm really bad at the sort of dance. I have trouble expressing the destructive and harmful... Even so, when the dance was over, I felt ready to be a priestess of the winds. It's all to... Thank you so much, Ethan. I hope we can meet again someday. Thanks, I poor to play to go. Also, how do I change title? Wind Deities Malachite, eh? There's another astral fissure. Who the fuck? Luciana. She's level 45, but what is she? <laughs> She's like red and covered in armor and trying to look sexy. Mm. Larsala, Lars Alex, actually, I think is the name, how you pronounce it. 4718. Huh. <coughs> 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 Alright. Your opponent's attacks are poisonous. Defeat your opponent. Hmm. Holy crap, how are there already 210 new messages in this one thing? Wow, how? Just how? Apparently, Chatoya had a random everyone notification or something? Hmm. Alright, whatever. Um. Let's try this. Hopefully it won't be too hard. I mean, it's a level 45, but our weapons are poisonous. Battle one. Fight. There we go, wall hit did the trick.
I don't know if it'll kill her or not, but I just Show saw down. an opportunity and took it. Give it up. Shit! She saw an opportunity too and took it. Damn it! Why couldn't I just do the bubble? That's all I was trying to do. Why is there lag too? Stop with the lag. There's the bubble. Seriously. I'm glad that one didn't take so long. in your body. Now I'm level 90. It's a quest all the way up there for. It's going on a journey's dawn. Back where everything had begun, I learned about a legendary healer of old. Hmm. May as well increase my horizontal attacks. I was trying to decide what, what I was going to do. Your opponent is permanently soul charged, eh? I returned to the place where everything began. Had I really met Zaslamel here so long ago? It felt like it had all happened to another person in another life. I suspected it was about time for you to return here. I turned to see Zaslamel striding towards me. Despite losing your connection to the swords, you have achieved much even become powerful enough to defeat the Cursed Sword Incarnate. That's what I'd like to say to you. But the truth lies beyond the ken of mankind. Zaslomel whispered something, then struck the ground with the butt of his scythe. The next moment, it felt like I was bound by steel chains. I streamed with all my might, but to no avail. Glancing about, I saw that the clouds, the grass, the trees, everything had stopped. All was still. Listen carefully. Zaslomel spoke, unfazed by the motionless world around us. All Ghoul, the Hero King, is said to be mere legend, but he is very real. Upon his death, his soul was sealed in the astral chaos. There he awaits the moment he can be released. In truth, the spirit sword that all Ghoul forged is simply a part of the cursed sword and so possesses the same properties. Each time you and I fought, I sensed the two swords, and also, ever so faintly, Al Ghul himself, if my instincts are correct. Sassalama already to scythe his golden eyes glittering with an ominous light. Al Ghul could be the greatest single threat to my plans. I will not take any chances. Sassalama's scythe arced toward my head. I readied myself for death. But what was this? I felt a phenomenal power surge deep within myself. With unbelievable speed, it erupted out from me, and the world itself melted and transformed. The hell is going on? I was in the astral chaos. Zaslomel stood nearby, seemingly unperturbed by his surroundings. He once again raised his scythe. In an instant, I drew my weapon and deflected his blow. I could move again. 
The shock from the strike numbed my hands, but I focused and readied myself to fight. Great, so I gotta fight Zaslamel again. Seriously, Zaslamel. Then again, though, he was kind of the bad guy in Soul Calibur 3, so why should I expect him to be a good guy, really, here? He was just helping me for his own ends. And now that I'm powerful, he's fearing me. Question is, why is it that when he uses Soul Charge, it's a holy aura? Usually. It's still a holy aura right now. Fucking bullshit just starting off with a critical edge. Damn it, always pulling off the fucking critical edge. Why? Why do you have to be such a bastard? now. That was a close one. But he had three fucking truth seeking orbs, you know, hovering around me or something. He could have easily went back in to the flow uh, time warp thing. Could he use that ability again? I stared at my hands, my senses clearer and sharper than they had ever been before. Power flowed through my body, from my toes to the tips of my fingers. In a few moments, the roar of the energy within me calmed, and I fell at one with astral chaos. Who was I until this moment? The world and its souls shall belong to me. The moment has finally come. I heard Zaslamel's voice as if from afar, and a bright light gleamed before my eyes. The spirit scales. As my consciousness faded, Zaslamel's voice reached me. Say your name. Keep an image of yourself in your mind. Hang on to your identity. Chaos. I felt myself drift to the surface from the depths of a deep, dark sea. When I opened my eyes, Aslamel was standing by my side. The astral chaos is a mire of confusion, an abyss both infinite and inescapable. It is power at its purest, and also the potential for change itself. Your power must have grown too strong, and your spirit resonated with and was subsumed by that of Algul. Another possibility exists, however. Zaslamel fell silent for a moment before speaking again. In my current life, I have examined closely the secrets locked inside my memory and discovered a connection to fate, or future memories, if you will. As such, I am able to predict the destiny of people and the direction in the world. When I met you, however, 
I was at a loss. And so I entrusted you with the Libra of Soul, the Spirit Scales. Accordingly, the movements in the scales caused by your actions means there is now a discrepancy between my memory and the happenings of this world. As though an alternate version of history has been created. This truth has given me an invaluable clue, and helped me envision the next move in my plan. And if my conclusion is correct... A wry smile appeared on Zaslamel's face. Things could get very interesting indeed. With that, Zaslamel left in silence. Seriously though, they fucking tease all these characters that are, could be in the game. Like Al Ghul, Young Sun, Amy. So, like, why? Why are you dragging me along like this game? Two astral fissures? At the same time? I think that's the one that just came on. What time is it? Oh, it's that time, eh? Hold up. Power of ambiguity, acceptance and progress. Okay, so maybe that's not actually what I'm thinking. So is this a normal astral fissure? Yeah. I'm fighting a level 55 nightmare. I gotta look closer at this. Your opponent won't recoil when hit by weak attacks, and their soul gauge fills up over time, eh? Yeah, it's got some minor tweaks. It's got some horns. It's using a fucking claymore. Hmm. Hmm. By Demark DFG. You know what? Sure. One more battle. I might end the stream for tonight and make dinner. Because I don't feel like going out to get pizza or whatever right now. Battle one. Fight. Not even a Claymore, actually. He's using another weapon altogether. He's also using Grove's Gauntlet. Siegfried his own soul back. Why is he using blue? Is that blue? Is that blue? You're not even using Soul Edge, so... And you just got your ass kicked.
As I stretch my hand toward- Oh, yeah, that's right. Why am I trying to read it? We already know what this fucking thing is gonna say. Your soul surges in your body. <laughs> and we'll park our ass here, but I'm going to end the stream for tonight because I've got dinner to make, so... I thought my friends were going to like try to get online and try to play games with me, but it doesn't look like it's happening tonight, I guess. But anyways, though, if you guys have enjoyed, be sure to do the usual accolades, like, comment, share, subscribe if you're new, follow me on Twitch if you haven't already, and if you didn't like, dislike, it's not going to make that much of a difference to me. So thank you all so much for watching, I'll see you next time. Peace out, Spartans.